So I started Fashion Valley six years ago, um, and back then there was no like e-commerce store, no online store. Uh, uh, I got this idea when I was studying in London with my husband, um, well, boyfriend back then. <laughs> then we got married. Um, so we were exposed to online shopping when we were studying in London. Uh, when we got back, we realised that the online scene in Malaysia was really non-existent or still very underdeveloped. Um, that's why we thought, let's, do, let's be the first to do it. But the problem was we didn't have any products to sell because I'm not a designer. You know, we didn't even know if it was fashion or food or, or anything or education. Um, but, we, but I have a blog. I've been blogging for 10 years now. Um, so I, I know that my followers are, are uh, interested in fashion um, and they're women. So I thought, okay, so that's my target market already. So I was blessed that I already have a ready target market that I could hopefully convert into customers. So that's how Fashion Valley started. Uh, we, we didn't have products to sell. So what uh, I did was um, I approached local designers and I said, hey, let's do something like Netaporter or ASOS for local fashion, so um, not everyone agreed to it. So we started in 2010 with only 10 brands that uh, believed in the idea. Um, and now it's grown to 500 brands, so it's been a, a ride. I think my biggest challenge would be maybe competition because e-commerce is so accessible and no barrier to entry. So anyone can start like a Shopify account. Anyone can sell things, you know. Um, so we really took time to find ourselves and to find what is our niche. So now people know Fashion Valley is an Asian fashion hub. So you know you can find your local brands there, you know you can find your Indonesian brands there. Um, it's very focused on local fashion. Uh, we won't carry like big brands or international brands. Um, so I guess when you do e-commerce, you have to find what is special and what is unique about you because everyone sells clothes, everyone sells tudong, you know. So what are you going to do that is different, that people will come back and shop and they know you by? Um, so, so that was our challenge, I think, trying to find ourselves, trying to um, look for local brands that are willing to grow as well. Um, and I think uh, when we started, not everyone has a credit card, not everyone has a debit card or online banking. So it took time for the market itself to mature um, and for people to believe in online shopping. Even now, like there are so many people who don't shop online. I've been trying to teach my mom. It's been six years. She has never bought a fashion valet. So uh, now we've also come uh, offline. So we have our first store here in Bangsa Village 2. We opened our Singapore store in Somerset 313 on Orchard Road. And now we're opening an in pavilion as well. So our, our strategy now is both online and offline because you really can't ignore the brick and mortar uh, business. It's very different. So online is a different game. Offline is a totally different ball game. I thought it was kind of simple but it's not. I learned what VM means is virtual merchandising by the way. Um, so you know when you're doing it online it's a lot easier because um, you have a warehouse everything's packed nice, uh, nicely in, in the army um, but when you have a store um, it's, it's all about appearance, it's all about how you display it, you know. You can't have a crease, you, can't, you have to steam your clothes, you have to display it nicely. It's a completely different um, ball game. Even the people who come in um, are, are different clientele than people who shop online. So it's, it's really different, two different businesses. Um, so that's why myself, knowing that I'm not very experienced or know much about retail, um, I have to hire experienced people to help me. Um, so that's why I always believe in hiring people who are smarter than you. The yeah. fashion industry is very competitive, but the advantage that Fashion Valley has is that we are not competing with these fashion brands. We carry these fashion brands. So um, for us, like, we are a platform um, that promote and sell different fashion brands. So we are not competing with them. In fact, we, we complement them. We're enhancing, um, we're creating more uh, selling channels. Yeah. <laughs> so 2 p.m. I'm a wife, 2.30 I'm a mom. No. Um, I think it's a struggle every woman has. Uh, until now, I'm struggling to find the balance. I don't think there's such thing even. Um, you just have to take it one day at a time. Some days that you are very busy at work, especially like say for us during Raya period, we were so busy. I hardly saw my kids. I was traveling a lot. So um, that period, 
I was less of a mom. I was more of an entrepreneur. Um, and then after that, during the Raya holidays, I make up for it. So I was less of an entrepreneur. I was more of a mom. So it's a constant, like you know, um, battle and struggle. The, the I think um, the only way to keep sane is to take it one day at a time and to always uh, strive for the best and don't waste time. I think what I've learned after being a mom is time management is uh, very important. Um, you cannot afford to waste time. So every time you have, you have to be productive. Even when you're with your kids, you know, you have to be productive with them. It's all about quality. Don't have kids yet. <laughs> I always tell young women that if you want to um, really give it your all, uh, do it when you're single because honestly it's so much easier. Um, so now you're probably thinking now I have kids so I'm screwed. No, you're not. Um, when you're a mom, I think you have to tell yourself that it's okay to get help. It's okay if you send them to daycare. It's okay for you to ask your mom to help because I think we, we want to do it all, but there's no such thing, you know. So uh, I would tell women to um, be realistic about their goals and um, plan your family as well uh, because they go hand in hand really. Um, also, generally, I like to tell young people to always look for criticism. You know, people have this misconception whether true or not about Gen Y that we're very arrogant and we don't like to take criticism. Maybe it's true, I don't know. Um, and uh, in a way, like we tend to look for answers that we're, we want to hear. Like your business idea is great, yes, you're great, you know, you're going you're gonna to go far. But um, we, ha we should look for people who disagree with our ideas, people who have things to say about our ideas that, because only this criticism can help you improve and find loopholes in your business and then you can think and see, okay, how do I overcome that? So I think in Fashion Ballet, because I'm very open and I'm very um, out there as a social media icon, so I get criticism even when I don't ask for them, you know? So in a way, it's a blessing because people tell me, they're like, okay, your website doesn't work. Or like, okay, I haven't gotten my order. Uh, what's going on, you know? Um, they complain publicly um, and there's pros and cons, but I always take it in a positive way that it's a way for me to know what's going on with my business. And um, uh, as much as they're criticizing me, I can take it positively instead of getting mad at them. I, I ask them, like, how can I improve? You know, what do you want to see more in Fashion Valley and what less of? Um, so I want the generation, you know, the younger generation to uh, open their hearts to figuring out what's wrong with them as well.